Howdy farmers, it's me, GameShark, and welcome back to another video. So as you've all probably heard, the official full multiplayer 1.3 update finally got released and was live and available to play on August the 1st for all PC users only. Console versions are also on the way. And today, I'm making a fully detailed and deeply explained video of everything that you will expect to see in this new update. From all of the brand new content, to some of the new features and events, which will make your gameplay much more fun. And of course, the multiplayer itself. So let's start off with some of the new gameplay content. Warning, there will be spoilers in this video. So if you do not want to see any spoilers and want to try and find these new content and features out for yourself, I advise to click off the video now. So there has been a brand new traveling festival added to the game called the Winter Night Market. The Night Market is a festival that occurs between the 15th and 17th of winter. Various boats and merchants will appear at the docks on the beach and offer to sell goods or take the player for a boat ride. The Night Market is open between 5pm and 2am but the submarine ride closes at 11pm. The mermaid boat closes at 12.30am. Unlike a normal festival though, farmers can come and go as they please and the location isn't locked out at any point. Pelican Town is different for a few days and most of the NPC's schedules change to reflect that. The festival offers farmers a once a year chance to acquire unique items, purchase an original work of art from the famous Lupini, enjoy some live entertainment and much more. I have made a detailed video of the Winter Night Market to explain and show you how everything works so if you want to check that out there will be a link in the description. But also in winter there is now a brand new collection type that you can start in your very first winter. This is available at the Winter Night Market and it is a fishing related collection because there is free brand new fish added to the game that can now be caught at the new winter event down in the fishing submarine and these fish are called the Midnight Squid, which you have a 28% chance to catch. There is a Spook Fish with an 18% chance to catch. And the rarest new fish to catch with only 10% is the Blobfish. Also down in the submarine, you can catch things such as the new rare item that has been added to the game, which is the Pearl. You only have a 1% chance to find this though, so if you do get one, count yourself a very lucky person. The Pearl can also be obtained from the Mermaid if you play your cards right. Or should I say, if you play your shells right. Something else new that has been added for the winter season. Who says winter is boring? But there is a brand new secret mystery that you need to unfold. There are now things in the game called secret notes, which are collectible notes that are unlocked by walking to the bus stop from your farm during the winter season between 6am and 4pm. The player will see a cutscene with a shadow guy, who is most likely Krobus or one of his friends, startles and runs away. After seeing the cutscene, the quest, a winter mystery, is added to the player's journal. The shadow guy's footsteps lead to a bush next to the playground, the left side of the community center. If the player interacts with the bush, the shadow guy will pop out of it, apologize for stealing, give the player a magnifying glass and then runs away. The magnifying glass gives a player the ability to find these secret notes while digging, chopping trees, mining, fishing or even killing monsters. Once found, a secret note can be read by selecting it in the top row of your inventory and right clicking on your mouse, as if consuming food. This will add the note to the player's collection and enable the secret notes collection tab on the player menu. Some notes will list loved gifts for certain characters while others will have images showing puzzle solutions. I have made another detailed video about the secret notes explaining them in further detail for how and where you can obtain them so you can go and watch that as well if you want to learn more about them. Another new thing added to the 1.3 update is a brand new community upgrade option which allows you to surprise Pam and Penny with a great gift. After fully upgrading your farmhouse and completing the community center or purchasing the Jojo Mart membership, players are able to purchase a community upgrade at the carpenter's shop for 500,000 gold and 950 wood. Robin will then build a new house for Pam and Penny if the player is not married to her. Note that only the host player in a multiplayer game is able to purchase this upgrade. There are a few more new character events in Stardew Valley, some of which grant you permanent bonuses. There are three new bonuses that can be obtained and added to your wallet. The first one being the Spring Onion Mastery. Permanently increases the sell price of Spring Onions by five times. To obtain the Spring Onion Mastery, the player must first earn eight arts of friendship with both Jazz and Vincent. 
then trigger a cutscene by entering the forest during the spring on a sunny day between 6 o'clock in the morning and 5pm at night. A cutscene will play during which Vincent shows the player how to clean spring onions by removing insects. Once obtained, it can be found in the wallet in the player's menu on the skills tab. The second permanent bonus that you can obtain from a new event is the Bears Knowledge, which permanently increases the sell price of blackberries and salmonberries by up to three times. The sell price of artisan goods made from blackberries or salmonberries is not affected though. To obtain this Bears Knowledge, the player must find a secret note number 23 and then go over to the secret woods with the maple syrup in inventory and then a cutscene will appear in which a bear takes the maple syrup and thanks the player by giving his special knowledge of berries. Once obtained, it can be found in the wallet in the player's menu on the skills tab. And the last permanent bonus is the special charm, which permanently increases your daily luck. It can be obtained after finding and reading the secret note number 20. Just follow the path in the note, start at the circle in the centre of Pelican Town, and follow each directional arrow until your character hits a permanent obstacle. The path will bring you around the town, up across the bridge to Joja Mart, and ultimately to a truck parked beside Joja. Interacting with the truck will allow you to speak to the truck driver, who requests a rabbit's foot. If you have one in your inventory, you can trade it for the special charm. But apart from some of the rare NPC events which will give you these permanent bonuses, there are of course a few new normal NPC events too that you can enjoy with the town's people. One being a Linus event, which allows you to offer him to come and live on your farm and get out of that dang tent. Another new cutscene with Willy, who seems to have a crab problem. I warned him about Marnie. And there is a new event where you can catch the mayor and Marnie in action, in a bush in one night, or even in Marnie's bed in another. Dirty buggers. Looks like the mayor's gonna have a crab problem too. And there is even another event where you can face all of your lovers at the same time at the Star Drop Saloon, and they all want answers. Good luck with that. There are a lot more NPC events, and I will be making a video showcasing all of these, so I won't get into it that much today. But take a look around, they're pretty cool. The School Cavern has had some new changes. Firstly, there are three new monsters added to the game. The Carbon Ghost, which only appears on the mummy levels in the School Cavern. There is the Iridium Bat, which can be found on different levels in both the mines and the School Cavern. And lastly, the Iridium Crab, found in the School Cavern only, starting from levels 26. But also, some of the old enemies like the Serpents have now been made to have much more powerful version. So be aware from now on, and be prepared for tougher times mining. I've witnessed this myself. Speaking of the school cavern though, there are now treasure floors added which you have a rare chance of finding a room with a chest containing useful items, including two that can't be found any other way, which, spoiler alert, are two brand new cowboy hats that come in red and blue. Small rooms containing treasure chests similar to those in the mines can randomly appear at level 10 plus. Daily luck and the luck buffs affect the chance to find these treasure rooms. And of course, obtaining the new special charm also increases the chance to find treasure rooms. And the last thing that has been added to the school cavern is a secret event with Mr. QI. After reading secret note number 10, the player will find Mr. QI at level 100 of the school cavern. A cutscene ensues in which Mr. QI will either congratulate you for reaching level 100 without using stairs, or he will say that you are clever but not honourable for using them. In either case, he will award you with Iridium Snake Milk, which permanently increases your health by 25 points. Something else new you ask? Well there's more, you can now also have the ability to change your skill professions if you regret your choice or want to simply try something new. The Statue of Uncertainty in the sewers allows you to change your chosen profession. After you donate 10,000 gold and then you go to sleep for the night, the level 5 choose a profession screen for the skill chosen at the statue will appear, followed by the corresponding level 10 choose a profession screen. The statue allows you to change one skill based profession per night. Whew, now all of that was some of the new main features added to the multiplayer update. But now let's talk about some of the new content such as items and furniture. There are now signs added to the game. Signs are craftable items which are available to you from the very beginning of the game. You can find them in the crafting menu and any item in Stardew Valley can be clicked onto the sign and it will display the item. And just be a bear in mind that the item won't be consumed. Also, a variety of new outdoor decorations have been added, including many that are just seasonal, meaning that their appearance changes with each season. 
Multiplayer makes decorating even more fun. Marnie now sells an awesome handy item called the Auto Grabber, an expensive item that can be placed in a barn and automatically harvests milk and wool from the animals each morning. Granny Evelyn will give you a new crafting item, which is the Garden Pots. Garden Pots allow you to grow any crop indoors all year round. Think of them as like a one tile greenhouse. When, when placed outside, however, they only grow crops that are in that season. Speaking of crops, there is actually one new crop that has been added to the game. I'm actually surprised that there is only one in this update, but that new seed is the cactus fruit plant. This is a crop that can be planted indoors only using the garden pot. And you can buy cactus seeds up in the desert shop from Sandy along with some brand new furniture. Fireplaces are now classed as furniture. This means you can move your fireplace around to wherever you like and also buy a couple of different types of fireplaces. Some can be sold at the carpenter shop with Robin and you can even find some down in the sewers. The best thing about this update though is that you can now place hats onto your horses. How cool is that? This doesn't even need an explanation, just enjoy. So I think that's everything you need to know. Every single bit of new content and all of the new features that's been added to this 1.3 update explained. No more beta guys, the multiplayer is out, the new update is out, it's live. This is the official release and obviously the consoles are on the way as well and when I do find some information about that, there will be a video for you guys. I've made some detailed videos showcasing these events and new items. I'll put the links in the description if you want to see how to obtain all of these and, and read them in greater detail. But this was just a simple video on like a guide on everything about the new update showing you what to expect to make it a bit more easier for you to understand but i am going to end that one there because that's all we've got time for so thank you all for watching hope this video was handy in any way click the like button if you did enjoy it make sure to subscribe if you're new around here drop some comments as well let me know what you want to see next i've got quite a few videos lined up but if you want to see anything in particular just let me know guys but thank you all for watching i'll catch you all on the next one Bye bye